Hey everybody, it's me, Dan Harrison, uh, coming to you this afternoon. It is uh, a gorgeous spring day outside. I could see it from my window, um, but I'm here talking to you, and I hope most of you are. Uh, uh, well, I assume if you're you're on this uh, this call, then you're you're probably indoors, and I hope you're maintaining social distance. Um, I'm going to share a few thoughts and uh, some uh, sort of higher level updates. I'll try to be brief. And then I've got Dan Lannon on on uh, on hold to uh, join us as to talk about some more some of the specifics of where things stand within our within our our, our programs. Um, you know, there's been um, depending on how engaged you are with social media, there's there's um, I've I've been hearing uh, more and more sort of uh, sort of talk about this uh, resistance to some of the social distancing. And I know there's a lot of uh, uh, frustration and people are feeling sort of itchy to um, to get back to normal. Uh, we're hearing about it from many different uh, uh, sources. And yet, um, if we look at the facts and uh, where things are, this is still a desperately serious situation and uh, my job is to uh, among other things is to continue to implore you to uh, uh, to maintain and to abide by the guidance that we've been receiving from our governor um, in in managing our social distance because that continues to be the very best way that any of us can um, ensure that we are uh, kept safe from this and uh, before I go one step further, I uh, wanted to thank again the heroes that we have working throughout our programs that um, our, that continue to show up for their shifts, uh, that continue to uh, put themselves into to harm's way in helping us care for um, our vulnerable populations, uh, people that depend upon us to take care of them. And uh, we are so grateful and continue to be for your your heroism, I'll say it because that's what it is. Um, when we we think about um, uh, the many staff that are for one reason or another not able to or decided not to, um, it's so meaningful to us that we have staff that are continuing to work in our programs. According to some of those recent um, reports, the data tells us that there's over 27,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Massachusetts alone. And right now, the death total is uh, quickly approaching 900, if it's not over 900 already. Um, I recently learned just late last night that there is a case of COVID in um, the uh, benchmark uh, at Woburn, where my mother lives. Um, it happens to be in the memory care unit, but uh, it is a terrifying thought to me because um, my worst fear is that um, if my mother were to get sick, that I um, could not be there with her um, during, you know, some um, what would clearly be, um, almost certainly be uh, uh, the end of her. And um, on Easter, not being able to, to see her, um, I drove around the parking lot behind her building and her, her apartment on the third floor looks out onto the parking lot. and. I stood in the middle of the parking lot and I called her and I asked her to look out and I just was dancing and being kind of silly in the parking lot just to kind of get a little chuckle from her because she was lonely and, and uh, you know, isolated completely to her room and and uh, she only has the staff that come in to care for her needs and they're gowned and gloved and, and masked and and um, hardly any kind of uh, tenderness there that, and I'm not, you know, complaining about the staff there because um, they're very good people, but they're abiding by precautions. And um, so I couldn't see her, but um, a little sort of raspy giggle on the other end was um, was about the best Easter gift that I could have gotten. So this uh, continues to be uh, a major, major threat uh, to, to so many um, and uh, has to be taken seriously. In the United States right now, there's more than 603,000 cases confirmed of COVID, and we have now hit the $25,000 mark for deaths in the United States due to COVID. Uh, just to put a little perspective to that, 
during the uh, 10 years of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, uh, there were something like 7,000 casualties. Uh, a terrible loss, certainly, for the United States. But if you think about 7,000 dead in 10 years um, uh, to the 25,000 dead already due to COVID, that puts a little perspective. So um, I urge all of you to continue to abide by the safety precautions and guidance that we are receiving daily and continue to receive. Uh, we, we, we in, in this industry, we, we're continuing to get guidance and updates uh, regarding um, what is expanding uh, to be uh, care for the people that we, that we um, support. Um, Dr. Redfield, the CDC director, uh, uh, in speaking about reopening, our economy or reopening society or social life and, and work as we know it uh, really emphasize that this is something that we're probably going to see eventually on a case by case, community by community, county by county uh, basis. Uh, we've heard in the news that uh, uh, certain governors are, are talking about regional kinds of responses to this um, and uh, and it's going to really continue to require early case identification that's more and more testing. Uh, Dan may be talking about this a little, little later, but one piece of good news that we heard is that uh, the Department of Developmental Services in coordination with Fallon is going to be doing mobile testing uh, for uh, residential congregate care uh, homes, group homes. Uh, right now it's starting with any location that's had a positive COVID uh, test and they will be testing all the staff there and other people living within the home. And once that is done, they're going to be expanding to all uh, group homes. So that right there is going to be a huge step forward for us. And it may take some uh, certainly days, if not weeks, to, to coordinate that fully. Uh, but uh, that's really the direction that um, we're, we're looking at this uh, moving. Um, Whatever happens, and even as the weather improves and, and beckons us, uh, when we do begin to return to some sort of a normal uh, rhythm of life, um, I, I believe, and from everything I've heard, heard that it's going to uh, demand massive, unimaginable kinds of changes to our, our routines and, and expectations. Um, I, you know, some experts, you know, are predicting that there'll need to be uh, uh, massive testing uh, of everybody that's that's working or going into workplaces that's that's done, you know, potentially even every couple of weeks. Um, a whole, you know, huge digital surveillance of the population, uh, whether that's using uh, uh, technology to. Uh, measure and, and, and record uh, body temperatures uh, as they enter the workplace or into uh, uh, places of commerce and um, and and looking at uh, uh, massive uh, mass uh, uh, serology testing uh, to see people that have, have had COVID that have built up Im immunity to it that uh, co possibly would be conscripted or, or um, uh, identified to work uh, in high-risk uh, populations or high-risk um, situations. So um, this is something that um, um, is going to be uh, around for quite a while, and um, it's our job to uh, respond in kind and to uh, be working constantly and continue to uh, adapt and, and plan for a future that is going to look unlike the past that we've left behind. Uh, we of course, they're all hoping for an announcement of some vaccine, um, uh, or at the very least, some improved um, treatments to reduce the mortality rate. That, uh, I, you know, from a selfish perspective, I, I'm hoping and praying that comes along before um, my mother gets it. But um, we all have reason to be concerned. Uh, an official at the World Health Organization recently said that this virus is going to stop the human race for quite a long time, at least until we found a vaccine. And even though we've seen uh, enormous improvements in, and uh, you've heard me talk about technology and uh, this being the uh, fourth industrial revolution and, 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 and an era where 
uh, science and technology are going to bring about huge improvements to the human human race. Uh, apparently, the uh, the testing of of potential vaccine is what um, the, there's no way to replace just the human body's response to various vaccines and whether it's effective uh, to measure the side effects to know whether this is something that can be deployed uh, in mass scale. So this is uh, this is something that could be still you know 18 months or, or longer away. And so I say all of this to you in the first uh, few minutes of, of this broadcast to remind everybody that um, that we are still uh, in the in in the heart and the in in the depths of of this challenge and this crisis, and um, I want everybody uh, that is connected to this great organization to uh, emerge on the other side with us. And um, it's my fundamental and and primary desire that we all stay safe and that we're all abiding. Uh, to the to, to to the best of our ability with the guidance that we've been receiving, so that we stay safe and that we don't uh, inadvertently or unknowingly um, uh, continue the transmission of this. <clears throat> um, we began this uh, whole impossible journey about three and a half weeks ago or so, and. Uh, uh, we've been, you know, going day to day, trying to make the best decisions that we can for this organization. Just quickly to remind people what our, what our, our journey's been. Uh, my, my first and 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 um, immediate concern was that uh, we have some time to to uh, 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 wait for the state to provide, you know, um, and the federal government to provide mitigation uh, to help us get through this. And um, my first. You know, positive announcement was that we committed to and promised that we would uh, continue to pay staff for a period of two weeks until we could figure out what our next strategy would be. Last week, we brought uh, Karen Franklin in, I think it was Thursday, to talk about um, uh, some of the uh, uh, changes that were going to be made as far as paying people or, 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 or whether or not we would be uh, looking at uh, furloughing some staff. Uh, as we've learned, this is something that was not going to be over and solved in a matter of weeks. Um, we've been required to uh, really look at what some of the next steps would be. Uh, we uh, need to maintain the solvency of this organization because we are part of a, a safety net of, of, of people that family, uh, of services that families depend upon and that, that our, our clients depend upon. And, and uh, so it's essential that we're able to uh, uh, to, to have a continuity of operations that we're able to uh, continue to you know pay the light bill and and, and our mortgages and that and that uh, we have the, the the staff that are trained to to work with people and that we're able to keep them on board and so um, we asked staff uh, last week to uh, let people know if they were willing and able to uh, work in other shifts to fill our residential needs and we've had some people that have stepped forward for that and I thank you um, I thank you very much for doing that and for those of you who are, are unable or, or for some reason uh, for whom this is not an option uh, we are going to begin to play staff um, into a, a furlough situation um, and we will be uh, notifying you and, and um, letting you know over the course of this week if that includes you in this first round, um, uh, it's it's absolutely not something that I ever thought I would be saying or making the decision to to have to do this. Um, but we believe that uh, furloughing people will be the very best option at this point, and we do uh, uh, believe that uh, given some of the um, uh, mitigation from from the federal government that. Uh, it may uh, be some temporary inconvenience, uh, but that people will be um, uh, should be able to manage with some of the financial assistance that will be coming via unemployment and um, some other things. Uh, by furloughing people, we'll be able to keep people on their uh, health insurance if that's something that you receive through us. And I've instructed uh, the our HR department, and Karen Franklin is is as we speak working with her team and. Uh, and, and other staff to kind of coordinate how this will look. 
as far as um, the employee contribution for the health insurance and so forth, um, providing any kind of resources and trying to ease the, um, the process of application uh, for unemployment and so on. Uh, this first round will in, include a number of staff that, um, that right now for just practical reasons don't have uh, a functional role within the organization because of the fact that it's, uh, they, can't, they can't do their jobs virtually. Uh, whether that be transportation or or day service and and uh, day have staff that have been displaced because of the closures of our our programs, guys, this is something that is um, um, I've said it already, but I'll say it again. It's very it's very difficult to imagine that we're we're where we are right now, um, and uh, I, I I wish I always had good news for people, but I don't. I can't always do that. And one thing that I have sworn to do is that I. I will be honest with you, and I'm going to tell you uh, the truth and what's what's happening uh, to the very best of my ability. And that's not to say that I'm not going to occasionally uh, get something wrong or 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 um, have uh, some detail that um, that I that I fail to provide. It's 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 um, uh, this is such a, a rapidly changing uh, set of circumstances that. Um, we go from one week to the next, and and, uh, and things do change. Um, but uh, for the time being, we will be um, making uh, some conscious decisions about reducing uh, our workforce um, significantly um, over the course of the next uh, few weeks. And so this this next round is going to be uh, kind of the first round of people. It's all of these things are going to uh, require. Um, an, an increased level of, uh, of, of staffing to, to, to process administratively uh, to make sure that that uh, those staff that are being furloughed are are receiving the attention and and, and the care and uh, the resources that they need to make this uh, as painless as possible and to ensure that um, that they're receiving the the financial uh, resource on the other end uh, you know through the federal unemployment and other and other factors, um, and uh, and we want to make sure that we we do this as in an organized way, and that we don't leave people hanging, um, uh, you know, out there in in a, in a state of um, uncertainty for any period of time. Um, you can expect that as we go into uh, additional weeks, as this thing stretches on, that we may have to dig a little deeper. So if you're somebody that that wants to remain employed with this organization, um, I, I urge you to um, again consider uh, uh, making yourself available to be redeployed in some capacity because we we continue to need people who are willing to uh, to work in some different venues and um, and we have a certain number of staff that have um, uh, really um, stepped up in in our virtual arena. Uh, Ted Horn joined us on Friday and uh, and I was so proud to hear the kinds of creative work that we're doing to support families to to make ourselves available and 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 the staff that are, are doing the morning meetings and, and and the origami and the exercise programs and so on these are all essential uh, uh, um, um, components of what our service provision and our service delivery is going to look like in as we move into the future you know the uh, people have said and, and 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 i and i believe this fully that uh, this, unlike any other thing that we've endured or experienced in a, in, a, in, in the last hundred years, is going to change our cultural uh, experience in, in ways that, that we can't even begin to imagine right now. And uh, New Path, in, 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 in the spirit of New Path, uh, we uh, believe and, and are prepared to, to play a role in, in defining that. And uh, so we're going to continue to work uh, vigorously. Uh, behind the scenes to to make sure that we're providing some of those new opportunities and options to um, to our membership and to our families. Um, so uh, we'll mention one more thing, and then I'm going to um, ask Dan to come on, on board to to share some specifics. I'll remain around to uh, maybe answer any questions or add things at the end. Uh, one thing that I did want to speak to very briefly is that it's uh, Something that I've learned just recently is that um, the uh, the unions in Massachusetts and SEIU, who our staff uh, belong to, uh, 
have been advocating for what's calling hazard pay. Um, it was reported that uh, that uh, some of the state ops uh, programs have staff that are working directly with clients have received um, an additional five dollars an hour uh, for the work they're doing with the clients. Um, you'll remember that uh, for staff that are working face to face with clients and coming in direct contact with clients during this time, we um, already have increased to two dollars more an hour. And for uh, the staff that are working with uh, the confirmed cases of COVID at our center. Um, we're, um, we're receiving an additional bonus on top of that. Uh, we were among the first agencies to, uh, to make this uh, financial incentive available. And uh, that was without any additional uh, money from the state to do that. But um, we are, uh, I assure you that we will be considering any additional um, the monies that we can add to that um, as as time goes on. Uh, right now, there is a, a, a discussion happening at a high level within the state uh, through the Collaborative, which is a consortium of, of trade organizations that include the Providers Council and ADDP. And we're in our work with them. They they are are looking at possibly some additional monies that would be made available to providers so that we can increase the level uh, that we provide uh, to as hazard pay for people that are working in the programs. And um, I promise you, I, 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 with everything that I, I can put before you, that uh, the second that we could make more money available to staff that are, that are heroically coming in and, and working with our population each and every day, that uh, we, will, we will do whatever we can to, um, uh, to to uh, to keep that at a level that is uh, commensurate with with the risk that you're taking, or at the very least commensurate with the level that the state ops and uh, some of the state programs are are now able to pay or have been decided to pay uh, the staff that, that are working in those programs. We understand that many of the staff that are working in our programs, uh, in some cases, are working in other organizations. Other agencies have chosen different ways to reimburse or to uh, to recognize uh, financial financially the risk that people are taking and, and uh, we intend to um, um, ensure that we're um, exceeding that or, or at the very least least are consistent with with what um, other organizations are doing um, and uh, that reflects our true commitment to the staff that are that are that are helping us get through this I, I said uh, last week I believe and probably several times, Probably a broken record, but uh, um, this is this is a defining moment uh, in our history together, and um, we will not forget uh, those of you who are stepping up um, and helping us through this. This is a time that goes beyond just a you know sort of an organizational commitment uh, or any sense of you know allegiance or or or, or loyalty to New Path. I, I, I think this is a, 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 a time that defines our our humanity in some ways, and um, I, I don't think it's too dramatic to say that that um, that those that are that are stepping up right now and and are are going the extra mile are are, are truly um, um, people that are, are that we will remember. Um, uh, you know, it's through the end of time, really, that that are helping us manage what can only be described as a as a as a as a, as a terrible and, and costly war um, that we're that we're experiencing now um, in our nation and, and and across the world and just look at the numbers of deaths and some of the projections I mean, if if um, um, you know we approach anywhere close to the level nationally that some people experts are telling us we could see um, you know 200,000 deaths um, uh, casualties of World War One were just about 116,000 terrible loss of life. Um, but uh, that just puts it to some perspective. So if you're somebody that uh, is thinking that this is uh, close to being over and, and you want to get outside and start to co-mingle with um, other citizens, I, I would beg you to uh, reconsider that and to um, uh, continue your, your, your isolation and social distancing um, as, as we move forward because you're doing your part in doing that. And, um, and again, thank you all so much for those who are 
um, coming in and um, and helping us uh, in our response to this. So uh, that's kind of uh, my high level right now. I may have a few more comments or remarks after Dan um, shares with us about what's happening in our in our agency. And um, and uh, Greg, if you want to bring Dan up, we'll um, let him uh, share that update, and uh, and then we'll um, and then we'll see where we are at that point. If he's uh, available, there he is. Hello. Hey, Dan. How are you? Good. How you doing? Good, good, good. I'm gonna uh, change locations this week, so I'm. I'm uh, yeah, it was I'm, kind of a little uh, threw me off there. Um, yeah. This was the former I office, longer, I guess. Before. I hope it doesn't mean I'm no longer your guardian angel. That's the only thing that I I want to <laughs> consider. So, uh, okay, Dad, I'll let you give us an update and see kind of where we are uh, organizationally, and and uh, and then I'll be here maybe at the end to to close us off. Good, good. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll, I'll update us. We haven't talked really, or I haven't done an update since last Tuesday, and so I'll let you know what's going on at the houses and, and update you of those um, cases that we have where someone is positive. So as we wound down sort of what was our first group of people at the center last week, um, they the last one moved out on this last Saturday where we were able to move him out um, back into his house after having been cleaned. and. Um, and so we were able to sort of get the center really deep deep cleaned on Saturday um, and on Sunday. And so um, at that point, we had no positive cases. We did have someone who um, began to show some of the symptoms and needed to go out for testing. And that person went out for testing and it came back um, that he that he was positive. And so um, we quickly, you know, um, restaffed the center and reopened the center for Sunday night. Um, and had one individual move in there, and, and that's how many currently reside at the center. So we have one um, positive case right now. We do have um, a few people, I think it's three out to be tested, um, that have been showing signs or that were um, around or interacting with um, the positive case. And so, um, you know, we might, this if it can, if it mimics the the trend that we saw before, this is how our numbers grew a little little higher before, um, was once we had that one confirmed positive, um, some of the, that person's roommates then then um, became back positive and we, we moved them into the center. These are over two different houses. This isn't just one house um, that, we're, that we're dealing with. So the, the people, the three people that are out being tested right now, do, two of them are at one house, one at, at another. And so, um, you know, Kelly Lawless today on the DDS um, call that we had, you know, used the word that in the region she felt like she was really seeing a surge right now and and um, and talked about numbers increasing for the region as a whole. You know, we've sort of um, we've sort of done a good job managing and and getting people um, staff protected and the individuals protected and keeping them separated and the center has helped with that. And so we're hoping that we can manage, you know, this um, steadily or, you know, the famous term flatten the curve for at least inside New Path. I do think, though, with her talking about the surge and, and, and what is happening with the increased numbers, that um, it is great that we get the mobile testing site available that, that she spoke of today. And they've really loosened, loosened restrictions around being able to get that tested for staff and for individuals who have worked at a current location with someone who has tested positive. Um, and so as well as other houses where there isn't a suspected positive person right now, but, but they just want to, um, start doing, um, some random testing in those houses to see if we can avoid the, you know, the exposure, um, of individuals who aren't showing signs, but may test positive and, and try to help with some of the, um, quarantining and, and isolation periods and, and keep staff health and healthy and safety, you know, uh, PPE equipment continued to get a little um, scarce over the weekend. There certainly was plenty to go around. We had a sort of estimated date that we could probably stretch it to was this current Thursday. And it looks like we'll have some relief tomorrow with 2000 masks coming in, which right now the only thing we're running a little close as well as two or three other avenues of, of, of masks. Um, the department is, has, um, has promised us 70 masks and, and a few other um, 
people have made their own mask for staffs to wear, you know, who are, who are going to be on shift, they'll have their own mask to keep for the week. And so, um, and so, yeah, so we're, 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 we're again, so, so fortunate to have so many staff volunteer, uh, not, you know, volunteer to do the center, but also, you know, willing to cover the, re the residential shifts as we go through this crisis. As Dan mentioned, you know, we were uh, one of the first agencies that did put in, um, you know, the $2 incentive for all residential homes. And so um, I, you know, I've worked with Dan for quite some time. So I do believe him. And I know that just as we did last time, that as soon as we know that there is some relief that can that we can pass on or or give more to to those staff that are on the front lines willing to come in and cover we we will do that and so um yeah so i think you know um as we go through this you know we do have you know the two houses that went through the cycle completely we had them clean the clean has worked out very well um i shared the price with you last week on that and and from what we're hearing that is the pretty standard pricing around so um, th that will be the cost for us to be able to to make sure that that um, all the areas are, are safely cleaned and and uh, people move back to a nice, clean, safe environment. So um, that's about it, um, Greg, for me for updates. Um, as you bring Dan back, I did want to mention one more thing. Um, we'll see what uh, we'll see what Mr. Morris has on tap here for. I guess I was just going to mention as Greg. The only question, Dan, you, you kind of addressed it is: Do the staff in the group homes have masks to wear? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I guess you know, just one last thing I want to add. I know you talked a lot, Dan, about the furloughing and about um, you know staff stepping up and and staff that that can do um, shifts and everything. And I know, having talked with you extensively since Thursday, and and many others on the team, Karen and, and others, I know what a difficult decision that, that was for you and, and how hard, um, you know, you work to bring staff together. So I, um, I know that, you know, we're just, again, I think people believe you when they say, you know, I guess I'm speaking, maybe I'm a little biased, but, you know, I do believe people believe you when, they, you know, um, they know you have their, their best well-being in, in mind. And so um, thank you for sharing that information with us. Yeah, um, thank you, Dan. Thank you for your update. Um, you know, one of my one of our my most important objectives here is that even with uh, staff, uh, some staff being placed on furlough, that you are still a part of this family. Um, it's it's critical to me that people. Uh, no matter who you are or, or or what part of the organization that you're working in, you are not less than. Um, this isn't, um, you know, a, a decision that we we feel that you're expendable, uh, that that you're you're not you're not important or or relevant uh, to us and our continued um, identity together because we we are we are this brilliant sum of our parts that. That, that come together that has made this um, this experience uh, for me leading this great organization so special. Uh, so by no means is this um, any kind of a, a statement or a, or or a, 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 you know a, a values decision about you know who who do we think we don't need. It, this is a, a strictly an a, a, an economic sort of formula that, that we are trying to um, uh, ascribe here, uh, if that makes sense. And, and, and with some of the um, provisions that, that were made available to organizations and uh, more importantly to staff that find themselves in situations where they may be unemployed, uh, the, some of these provisions make it so that uh, that employees will be able to uh, survive uh, at, at, at well beyond the you know the standard unemployment rates that would would normally or or typically be awarded to staff that that would apply for unemployment. Now, there is uh, as as Karen talked about last week, there may be some delays uh, in in um, uh, 
the processing of, of the unemployment claims that are coming in to um, the Department of Labor. And, and we, we, we know that this is something that could cause some hardship. Uh, staff that uh, will be furloughed and will begin this application process. I uh, urge you to um, uh, follow through with, with whatever you instructions you hear from the Human Resources Department. Uh, Karen and her team have uh, gone to extraordinary lengths to uh, try to uh, distill whatever is necessary into some easy to follow uh, steps. And um, uh, as you wait for your unemployment checks to kick in, um, in theory, you'll, you'll be receiving your your check uh, for work done you know, over this past pay period that's, that's concluded um, you know, within two weeks. And then hopefully within another two weeks when you would be expected your pay typically from New Path by then your unemployment check should kick in. If for some reason that doesn't happen, um, you know, again, reach out and talk to somebody because I, I couldn't I couldn't stand it if I thought that somebody was was really had found themselves into some um, some some real financial hardship. You know, we're dealing with difficult things, and as this thing hits more and more people. Um, uh, the last thing that anybody needs to be worried about if they're if they're dealing with the, the loss of a loved one or or the fear of of, of uh, supporting a, a family, I, I, I just don't want it to you know the, the financial worries to be among them. And I know that this is a, a deeply distressing and concerning time for people. Uh, I hear it and I understand it, and I will do everything in my power to to try to find a way to make this work. What I'm trying to do right now is to make sure that that New Path remains uh, solvent and that we are here on the other side, and that whenever that glorious day happens, that we'll um, have open arms to welcome everybody back together. So. Uh, I, I, I will, we're going to do this together because we do, we do got this, uh, no matter how challenging the time it may be for us. So, um, Greg, I don't know if there are any questions, um, uh, nope. that have not been answered. Uh, been answered, Dan. I'm sorry. No questions. Everything has been answered. Everything has been answered. All right. So that doesn't mean if you think of a question afterwards, feel free. Some people are emailing me directly. That's fine. I I apologize if I don't get back to everybody. There's been a lot going on. Um, and we will um, do um, another uh, forum on Thursday. We may have some more specific details for staff that are, are wondering whether or not they are going to find themselves into uh, one of this uh, first wave of furloughs that we are uh, preparing to um, to uh, implement, and um, and then um, on Friday we'll um, do our uh, Unity Forum where we will um, well we'll hear from some of our staff and uh, more sort of the human the human side of things. Last, hey, and I'm sorry, last Friday. I'm sorry. Before you wrap up, uh, just a couple of questions came in about the holiday in, in uh, what we're doing uh, about uh, Patriot's Day on Monday and, and rescheduling or right. So we have made the decision that we are going to um, postpone this holiday. Um, uh, uh, there is uh, so many other things right now that are going on from a compensation perspective. And, and um, what, uh, what we talked about this morning was uh, potentially putting that holiday off until my dream would be that we could give uh, the day before Thanksgiving and the day after, which is typically what we use the Veterans Day holiday for, the day after Thanksgiving. And um, and I'm hoping that by Thanksgiving we'll have a time to, it'll be a time to make it a collective and memorable um, time of, of, of gratitude and Thanksgiving that we will have gotten through the worst of this by then. And that this will be a time when families will begin to come together again and and uh, that the holiday will be uh, more uh, appreciated and uh, useful at that time. So that's the decision that we've made, and that's that's how we will be uh, 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 you know, managing that uh, as we go forward into next week. Is that Great. it? Okay. Hey, to your families out there, what can I say? Um, thanks for your patience. 
Um, thanks for your cooperation. Thanks for the things you do, the hundreds of things I'll probably never even know about that you are doing to support our wonderful staff on the front lines that are there every day. Um, we only wish to be the best that we can be during this time of crisis. And um, sometimes, we've said it before, we're not always going to get things right, but uh, we mean the best. And, and we're going to continue to work for you as hard as we can in support of the clients that are out there and, um, and supporting our staff as we do it. Because you've heard me say this before, but our staff are our most important resource. As we as we continue to pursue our mission, even even during these dark times, uh, that uh, 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 we wish to make life's journey happier, healthier, more fulfilling for people with disabilities. So with that, I sign off, and we we got this. We got this. We'll do this together. Thanks, guys.